Welcome people of planet earth and all planets beyond. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Josh and today we're going to talk about my process uh, when dating vintage Levi's and sort of how I solve some issues when it comes to things that seemingly are contradictory. So let's get into it. So this week Andy, a subscriber, sent me a pair of jeans uh, that were perplexing to him and were perplexing to me at first and we had to follow a few steps to really sort out how to uh, date uh, the production of these Levi's. So I want to talk about sort of how I process and the steps that I take in when approaching these jeans because there are so many varieties and, and exceptions and possibilities out there. Uh, sometimes it can get confusing and we can get real turned around trying to sort out all the different variables. So let's take a look at the pair of jeans that Andy sent me. Here is the back patch. Uh, it's a 603, which is a you know wide leg flared jeans as most of the 600 series are. It's probably a women's pair of jeans as well. But you can notice that the back patch is a little bit more narrow than the typical Levi's back patch that we might all be used to. Uh, it's not an, it's not a fake or anything. It's a, just a fairly rarely used back patch that was used um, occasionally. Now, typically when I'm dating vintage Levi's jeans, I'm gonna go straight to the care tag if I actually have one. In this case, I do. And on the back of the Levi's care tag is a date code. If you don't know how to read those date codes, you can check the eye above for a video all about how to read uh, Levi's care tags. Uh, but I'm going to go look for a two, three, or even a possibly a four digit date code to tell me whether or not uh, these were produced in a particular month or year. Now, if we look at this Levi's care tag here, you can see there's a bunch of random numbers. There's 10, 7, there's 3, 8, 1, 17, and some other weird numbers here. Which one of these is the date code? Well, typically we're going to look for a number that, you know, could actually be a date. So if we have some weird numbers that wouldn't technically even produce a date, then, then we can eliminate those. But there's several here. So how in the world could we determine it? Well, I use a process of elimination at this point to sort of eliminate possibilities. And the first method I will use is actually just looking at the style of care tag. Like this style of care tag was used between the early 70s and the mid 80s. So right off the bat, we know that we're looking for a date uh, and, and a date code within that range of the early 70s to the mid 80s. We're gonna sort of eliminate the 90s. So good, we're narrowing it down but we can narrow it down even further. There are also some other numbers on the back of this care tag. We know one of these numbers is a factory code. The factory code tells us where this uh, pair of jeans was produced. Now, we don't know which of these numbers is the factory code just yet, but we can confirm it because that factory code number is also stamped on the back of the closure button of the pair of jeans. So let's take a look at the closure button. Here you can see that the number stamped on the back of the button is 17, which is great. We have that number actually multiple times on the pair on the, the care tag. So we can eliminate 17 as the, uh, as the, as the, and that's the factory code. It's not the date code. So we know that number is something else. So we can eliminate it, leaving us with a handful of other numbers. Now we certainly have the range still from the early seventies to the late, uh, to the mid eighties, but that factory co code can tell us a few more things. And that's because the Levi's factory code made a big transition around 1981. Uh, and after 1981, they moved to a three-digit code system for the factory code. Before that, it was one digit, one letter, or two-digit factory codes. This one has two-digit factory codes. So that gives us, uh, a, a, a narrows our range down. So we're going to look at this range being from the early 70s to 1981. That's the window so far that we have reduced down to. So now that we've eliminated the mid 80s and the 90s and beyond, uh, we're starting to really narrow down our, our window. Well, now that we know that information, we, we're pretty confident that it's no younger than 1981 or so, and it's no older than the early 70s. Let's take a look at those numbers in the back of the care tag again. Well, we have 10, 7. Uh, that's great. We don't. That's that could give us October 1977, which is within our range, and we can see that there's 381, which would give us 
uh, March of 1981, which is barely, but in our range. So which of these two numbers is correct? So the next step we're gonna do is we're gonna use another method to eliminate uh, even more possibilities. And that is with the zipper. So in 1980, Levi's released the Levi's branded zipper. Prior to 1980, Levi's used Talon 42, Ripper Zipper, Scoville, lots of other generic zippers. But in 1980, Levi's started the transition to using only Levi's branded zippers for their jeans. So that fact can help us reduce the possibility even further because this pair of jeans has a Levi's branded zipper, which means that when we look at those two numbers, 107 and 381, we know only one of them actually fulfills uh, the all of the requirements that we've thus far uh, achieved. It has to be older than 1981, and it can't be any younger than 1980, which leaves us only with one set of numbers as the possible date code, and that is 381, which gives us March of 1981, which this pair of jeans was produced in. So there is a little bit of discrepancy here that I do want to point out. And that's because oftentimes we talk about date codes as being two digits or three digits from this era. And the first two digits are typically the month and the last digit is the last digit of the year. That is mostly true and commonly true. Oftentimes though, in the 80s, we would see a date code like this that is a three, which is the month, and 81, which is the last two digits of the year. Now, even if you read it 8-1, you'd still get the same result because that would give you the same year. It would just be that they were produced in August. Uh, but in this case, I believe uh, the way that this is showing us it is actually the month is March the 3rd and the year is 1981. And I can be confident of that because of all the other made the factors that we used to narrow down the window. So I use this process of elimination all the time, whether I'm answering your questions or dealing with my own inventory, I use it outside of just Levi's. It's how I get windows of production uh, for different other brands, because some brands aren't like Levi's and gave us a, you know, a date code on their garment itself. Some don't have any of that information, and we just can only hope for a narrower window of production to get a better idea of when it was produced. This process of elimination has helped me actually develop new methods uh, to determine whether or not uh, certain brands' garments are a certain age or not, because I can use them to find patterns, and I can use them to find uh, sort of the, the common denominator between all of these different little production factors. So if you're trying to date your own vintage clothing, use a process of elimination to try to get to the narrowest window you can because once you find that narrow window you might find a piece of information or a rule or some element in the production that gives you a much more spot on idea for how to date your vintage clothing. Alright, so I hope this was helpful. Please remember to like, comment, subscribe. We'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.